everybody, it's Sarah and today I am giving to you the first of my kind of 2019 wrap up videos. I'm going to have a total of three. The first one, as I just said, is this one in which I'm just going to give a quick overview of how my 2019 reading went. I'm going to talk about the goals I set myself at the beginning of 2019 and whether or not I achieved them and I will also have a lot of stats. But I will talk about the goals first, so if stats aren't your thing, you don't have to watch the whole video or you can just skip this video and then move on to the second and third video as soon as I have uploaded them. The second and third, of course, are going to be my best as well as my worst slash most disappointing books of 2019. And it's okay if stats aren't your cup of tea, I'm sure you will enjoy the other two videos a lot anyway. So let me just jump right into it because we have a lot to get through. First, I want to share with you the books that I started and ended my year with. I started my year with Circe by Madeline Miller and that was a good choice because I enjoyed this book and it just like started me on a positive note into the year and made me believe that this reading year is going to be great, which it then ended up being or maybe not, but I have the feeling that I had a good year and that's the most important thing. And then I ended the year on a reread and that was of Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, which is the first book in the Infernal Devices series. And I first of all reread this because I've been meaning to reread it for a longer time. And the Infernal Devices is one of my favorite nostalgic series. It's my favorite series by Cassandra Clare in general. And then I decided to get this beautiful 10th anniversary edition as a Christmas present to myself. And also I just want to reread the whole series before The Last Hours comes out, since a lot of the characters that appear in the series, which are some of my all-time favorite characters, are probably going to appear in The Last Hours. So yeah, that was a nice way to end 2019. I almost thought I wouldn't make it because I started quite late. I think I started on the 29th or something and this is a 500 page chunk of a book, even if I have read and reread it a couple of times already. But then I had a six hour train journey on the 31st, so it was quite easy to finish this after all. Okay, so now onto my goals that I had for 2019 and whether or not I managed to achieve them. My first goal, of course, was my reading challenge, how many books I wanted to read and it was my first year to ever set myself a reading challenge. I said I wanted to read 50 books of which I want to have 30 books that are like first time reads and that aren't rereads. If you have been on my channel for some time you will probably know that I had quite a reading slump in 2017-2018 so I just kind of wanted to set myself a lower goal with 30 books and then like 50 total. So did I succeed in my reading challenge? Yes, I did. I think I finished my reading challenge back in October and in total I read 72 books of which 55 were first time reads and 17 were rereads. So I'm actually quite proud of myself since I technically did finish my reading challenge even if I just count the books that I read for the first time. I also kind of set myself a page count that I want to get to and that was 15k pages and I doubled that count. I read 32,000 pages. So pat on the back for that. I love that for me. Next, I also did a TBR chart for the first time in 2019 and I had the goal that each month I would pick three books out of this TBR chart and then read one of those books to kind of get my TBR down. And I did also succeed in this challenge. I read one book from my TBR jar each month and in total I had 90 books at the beginning of 2019 on my TBR shelf and now I have 70 books. So I read quite a few more than just the 12 that I chose from my TBR jar and I'm actually quite happy with that, that I got down to 70 books on my TBR shelf. It kind of feels good to know to have read 20 books off of my TBR shelf. Next, the goal that I didn't succeed in was my book buying ban and I just completely failed. The book buying ban that I set myself also as a goal to get my TBR shelf down, which I then ended up kind of doing, was that I'd have to read two books off of my TBR shelf before I was allowed to buy one book. And I did not do that. I <laughs> read as I said, 20 books off of my TBR shelf. So if you can do maths, that ends up being 35 books that I acquired during the year new. However, what I did do is I almost read all of those books. There are two exceptions to the books that I got new this year. The first one is 1984 by George Orwell, 
which I found in my grandma's flat for some reason. I don't even know why because she doesn't read English books and this is in English. So it's not a German translation. But my grandma moved to a retirement home this year. So my mom and I kind of just are currently cleaning out her flat and I found this and I didn't get around to reading it yet since I only got this in December. And then the other book that I didn't get around to reading that's technically a new addition to my TBR shelf is A Little Life by Hanya Yanigahara, which I got for Christmas. So I only got it like one and a half weeks ago and <laughs> I did not have time to start this yet. It's a chunk of a book and I'm kind of scared to start it, but I still wanna. So yeah. Actually, that makes it that I read more than 20 books off of my TBR shelf, but I'm too lazy to do the maths right now. So then to the goals that I had for rereads and stuff. First, I had the goal to reread slash finish Brandon Sanderson's books series. I did not read any of the books that I hadn't read yet, aside from Starside, which only came out in November. So kind of fucked up that goal. And I only reread Elantris, so... Um, yeah, not a goal that I managed to achieve. Next, I had finished my reread of the Shadowhunters Chronicles series, which I already forgot that I started that back in 2018, which I kind of also fucked up. But as I said, I did reread Clockwork Angel. So, I mean, kind of a tenth of the goal achieved. Finished the Anita Blake series. No. Did not do that. I read Bullet by Anita Blake, which I think is the 22nd novel in the series, but yeah, nowhere near finishing the series. And then I also had the goal of rereading old favorites, and I did start my reread of the Anne Bishop Black Jewel series. I reread the first two and a half books. I DNF'd the last book because I hate the ending, it makes me sad, and I don't like it. And I also reread The Black Magicians, not the trilogy, I reread The Magician's Guild by Trudy Canavan, which is the first book in the Black Magicians trilogy. And I still have to reread the second and third book. And the third author that I also put with old favorites is Jennifer Fallon. And I didn't reread anything of hers this year. So yeah, that's what I had with my goals. And now let's go into the statistics. I have my MacBook right here with my spreadsheet. I also have like the, the pretty basic stuff I have written down as well. So if I look down, that's where I'm looking, just so you know. As I said, I read 72 books this month, which makes for a total of six books per month. My most books read in a month was November, in which I read 13 books, and the least books I read in a month were in May and June, in which I each read only two books. I read a total of 32,443 pages, which makes for an average of 89 pages per day. Again, the most pages per day I also read in November, which was 215 pages. And the least pages per day were in June, in which I only read 27 pages a day. Then when it comes to page length, the shortest book I technically read was Faust Part 1 by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, which was about 140 pages. However, since this is a bind up, I kind of don't want to count it. And the actual shortest book I chose was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley with 215 pages. So basically, I read Frankenstein each day in November. That's kind of crazy to think about. And the longest book I read this year was Kingdom of Ash by Sarah Chamas, which is the seventh book in the Throne of Glass series. I don't want to get into this book because it was so long and I hated it so much. And like, I'll leave a link down below to my rant review and up here as well. But this book was 984 pages. Most of the books I read were between 400 and 499 pages. I read 27 books that were in that page range. After that was between 300 and 399. I think there was like 17 books. And after that was between 500 and 599 pages, which was 11 books. So like my average length for a book was somewhere in that range between 300 and 600 pages. I read a total of 71 novels in one play, which isn't surprising to me since I don't read that much other stuff aside from novels. It's already surprising to me that I read one play this year. I'm like, pat on the back again. It comes to no one's surprise that the biggest chunk of the books that I read this year were fantasy, more specifically high fantasy, 
almost half of the books that I read this year were high fantasy. However, almost a tenth of the books that I read this year also were classics and I am kind of proud of that. About 50% of the books that I read also were adult. Then comes young adult with more than a third of the books that I read. And then I also read a few new adult books sprinkled in there. Another thing that probably won't surprise anyone since I do read a lot of fantasy, about 80% of the books that I read were part of series. So yeah, now we know why I have such an issue with finishing series since I always start new ones. It will maybe come as a surprise that when I talk about mostly reading fantasy that over three fourths of the books that I read or around three-fourths of the books that I read were written by female authors but I've always had that I just gravitate more towards books written by female authors it's just something that's that's usually happened to me although I guess maybe if I manage to finish my Wheel of Time reread and if I read The Witcher and the Book of the Ancestor maybe that will change in 2020 we'll see However, I sadly didn't add anything to my spreadsheet or didn't have anything in my spreadsheet that kind of made me look at how many books that I read were written by white cishet authors. So I can't really talk that much about how much representation I had concerning marginalized groups with authors. I definitely need to change that in 2020 and I definitely can say that it probably wasn't enough because I do not generally look that much at who the author is of a book. Sadly, I should change that. However, what I did do was I kind of followed how much representation I had in the stories of the books. And I'm happy to say that 33% of the books that I read had representation concerning either race, LGBT, mental illness or disability, although the first two definitely were prevalent and I still have to work on the other two. Even if I had a few books sprinkled in there with mental health representation and also disability representation. I'm still kind of proud of myself when it comes to reading more diversely because while there still is room for improvement, I did also improve a lot compared to the last few years. And also when I count out all the rereads that I did and only count new books, I'm actually over 50% at diverse books and by the way when I talk about diverse books when I talk about books including representation and diversity I'm talking about books that have main characters that are from marginalized groups so I'm not counting any and I'm just saying her because she's quite well known in that type of field I'm not counting any Cassandra Clare who might have well done representation concerning side characters but her main character is still a white and cis hat. I'm just counting books that actually feature main characters that are either POC or that are LGBT or have a disability mental health. I'm really just counting those and if I count all books that include representation no matter where that representation is I'm actually at only a fourth of the books that I read that don't have any type of representation at all and most of those were classics. And lastly I want to talk about stars and I actually thought I had quite a good reading year this year but when I look at my star ratings maybe not as much and like divided apart my star ratings this year were as follows. I had 23 books that I gave 5 stars, 4 books that I gave 4.5 stars, 17 books that I gave 4 stars, 4 books that I gave 3.5 stars, 14 books that I gave 3 stars, 3 books that I gave 2.5 stars, 5 books that I gave 2 stars, no books that I gave 1.5 stars and 2 books that I gave 1 star. So that doesn't look that bad because that divides up to an average of 3.84 stars per book which is quite good it's almost four stars however then i thought hmm what's gonna happen if i don't calculate with my rereads in the list and then it looks as follows i read 11 books that are five stars so over half of the books that i read that i gave five stars were rereads i still gave four books 4.5 stars i gave 14 books four stars i gave four books 3.5 stars i gave 13 books three stars. I gave two books, 2.5 stars. I gave five books, two stars. And again, I gave two books, one star. 
So yeah, that adds up to an average of 2.76 stars, so below a three star rating, which uh, kind of bumps me out, but yeah, what can I do? What can I do? I started giving a lot more three stars and two star reviews this year because I just started giving every book that I enjoyed while I was reading it, but then pretty soon forgot that initially gave a four star rating i just bumped it down to three stars and i also started giving a lot more of two stars and 2.5 star ratings and of the three books that i ever gave one star two of those books i read this year so yeah what can i do what can i do anyway i really hope you enjoyed this video and you're looking forward to my other 2019 wrap-up videos my best and worst books of 2019 if you wanna be up to date when i'm going to update this maybe think about subscribing also if you enjoyed this video give this video a like if you please and then as always all the links to my social media are in the description box down below so go and check those out and i hope i'll see you soon bye